uh, back to it, you got the native state of DHFR back over a period of a few minutes, and you could take a spectrum of that. So the idea, again, is that polypeptide binding uh, rescues proteins from kinetically trapped states. And one of the most elegant experiments along those lines was carried out by Lorimer's group and reported in 1996. What they did was they took Rubisco and acid unfolded it, then uh, um, neutralized it to allow it to start folding. And at various times after folding started, added the complete GROEL, GROES, ATP mi mixture. So if that mixture is present at T0, there's fairly efficient recovery of Rubisco native state. If you wait 10 or 15 minutes, uh, recovery is far reduced. So something bad has happened to the protein. It's become uh, irreversibly kinetically trapped or aggregated. If you wait till later times, it's even worse. And in fact, if you never add GROEL, GROES under these what we would call non-permissive conditions, Rubisco never reaches the native state. There's no recovery of the native material at all. And so the way to think about this, we think, is that Rubisco uh, coming out of denature runs into a kinetically trapped state fairly efficiently that cannot reach the native state on its own. And it needs GROEL to pull it out of that kinetically trapped state and allow it to reach the native state under these non-permissive conditions uh, inside the folding chamber. And of course, initially, this would be uh, the kinetically trapped state probably for, forms reversible low order oligomers, but ultimately it's irreversible aggregates and there's no recovery if you add GROEL, GROES at that point. So a, a quite elegant experiment has directly observed um, what I believe is uh, evidence for lifting Rubisco uh, physically out of a kinetic trap. And this was carried out by Hayes Rye. Uh, and what he observed was that GROEL, GROES could refold Rubisco at four degree temperature, remarkably enough. Uh, in a, and, and in fact, at that temperature, the Rubisco coming out of denaturant is a misfolded monomer that does not aggregate. And therefore, Hayes could do an experiment where he could take misfolded monomer and add GROEL to it, just GROEL, forget GROES for the moment, and ask what would happen to that monomer. And what he observed uh, through a series of FRET experiments was that the monomer became stretched. So binding to multiple GROEL domains appears to be able to stretch the polypeptide. And it does it on the time scale of one or two seconds, which is realistic for how GROEL works because a ring is only open before it becomes GROES encapsulated for a second or two. And so this suggested that in fact um, a major action of an open ring is to pull a polypeptide out of a kinetically trapped state uh, as Hayes observed. Okay, so I want to turn to po the polypeptide folding part of the reaction. So when we first looked at unliganded GROEL and docked native rhodonese, a 33 KD sulfur transferase that uh, under our various in vitro conditions absolutely requires GROEL, GROES to reach the native state, what we saw was a terrible steric clash of rhodonese with the apical domains. It seemed like there would be no way possible for this protein to fold inside of the chaperona. It would have to fold outside in free solution. But Helen Sable really changed our thinking about that. So here's Helen shown on a uh, famous golf course in Melbourne where the golfers compete with these objects that are all over the place. And that's the, the, the nature of what she does, is to take objects in all sorts of orientations and carry out EM on them by essentially generating uh, an image reconstruction. And when she did that with GROEL, GROES, what she observed was that when GROES binds to GROEL, the apical domains on that bound side open up and there's a chamber here that's relatively open. Open enough that a polypeptide could conceivably fit in that chamber and maybe even fold in that chamber. By comparison, here's the so-called trans side of the complex uh, where the apical domains are not elevated and GROES is not bound and there's just the, what we assume is the 45 angstrom uh, um, dimension hole. So Jonathan Weissman, who was a postdoc in, in the lab at that time, uh, decided to ask whether a polypeptide, in fact, could be uh, housed underneath GROES in a protease-protected location. 
So he did an order of addition proteolysis experiment. He either added GROW-ES first to GROW-EL, followed by polypeptide, and then protonase K. In this case, because the polypeptide is bound to an open trans ring, it's completely digested by the protonase K. Or the opposite order of addition, where he added polypeptide first, and now let GROW-ES come on in nucleotide, and it would come on randomly, a 50-50 distribution of a cis configuration like this, or a trans configuration like this. And what he observed with protonase K digestion was indeed that the trans molecules were digested, and remarkably, the cis molecules were protected. He went a step further, and I won't detail this, but he carried out some hit and run cross-linking experiments that basically confirmed these topologies, taking advantage of the fact that the tails on the, uh, these C-terminal tails that I've mentioned to you on the side of a GROW-ES bound ring are not susceptible to protease, whereas on uh, a ring that is not bound by GROW-ES, they are susceptible. And so he could confirm the topology. So this is just a picture of the lab group at that point. Here's Weissman himself. Here is Christina, who made all the zillions of mutants we've made over the years. Here's Hayes Rye, who carried out the, uh, basically fluorescence experiments uh, that I won't have time to really detail in, um, very extensively, that worked out the dance of GROW-ES and GROW-EL and a polypeptide, how the components all interact with each other, and a host of other people who really contributed in major ways to um, both x-ray work and functional work. But the next really major experiment was carried out by Wayne Fenton, who's actually here at this meeting with me, and who's been working together really with me side by side for what is going on almost 30 years now. Uh, and what Wayne decided to do was to make trans complexes or cis complexes with OTC and discharge them under single uh, turnover conditions and ask which ones would be productive. And actually, the lab was pretty evenly divided about what would be productive. I can't remember who thought what, but I think Jonathan thought that cis complexes would be productive. Wayne thought that trans complexes would be productive. I was completely neutral. All I wanted to see was a clean answer uh, at that point in history. And in fact, the answer was clean. Cis complexes were uh, completely productive, and trans complexes were dead as a stone. So polypeptide folding nominally commences underneath uh, uh, GROW-ES. The question is, could it complete, uh, could, could it reach the native state uh, underneath GROW-ES? And so uh, a visiting student, Corinne Hole, who's also gone on to be a, um, a, a physician, uh, had carried out an experiment in which she took advantage of our knowledge that, uh, this, these were uh, observations from George Lorimer, that ATP needs to bind to the opposite ring of GROW-EL in order to discharge GROW-ES from the so-called cis ring of GROW-EL. So if you took away the opposite ring altogether, there was no way to eject GROW-ES. And you would have a stable folding chamber that should not fall apart. And so what she did was to essentially make four simultaneous uh, electrostatic to alanine changes uh, at the base of each subunit of GROW-EL, so there was 28 mutations basically in total, and that produced the single ring version of GROW-EL that we could easily purify. She then bound rodents to the open ring of uh, single ring one, or SR1 as we call it, and then added nucleotide and GROW-ES to encapsulate uh, the rodents and asked whether it could reach the native state. And the answer was yes, it reached the native state just as efficiently as in a wild type reaction that cycling where polypeptide is in a chamber for 10 seconds and ejected into solution, come back, comes back, tries to fold again and gets ejected again. Here it's a stable folding chamber. The question was, did rodents reach the native state inside that chamber? And these are essentially um, enzyme assays carried, on the, carried out on the 400 KD material that, uh, from a gel filtration column that is the SR1 GROW-ES complex. And indeed, rodents reached the native state inside that complex uh, with the same kinetics of a wild-type reaction. So it suggested that cycling is not really necessary uh, for a polypeptide to reach the native state. Of course, most proteins have to get out of GROW-EL, GROW-ES, because they're part of oligomers, and they have to function elsewhere in the cell with their partners. So what does a cis complex actually look like then? So this was a big struggle, because we could all make GROW-EL, GROW-ES complexes in ADP, or various non-hydrolyzable nucleotides. 
but then none of them would freeze decently in order to collect crystallographic data. And so Zhao Wei Zhu, uh, now at University of Michigan, uh, but a postdoc then in Paul's group, was really the hero of this work. He took one year to work out a freezing condition that turned out to be actually a fairly swish and then freeze in the stream type of, of, of procedure, but that froze these crystals in such a way that they weren't massively twinned uh, and they preserved diffraction and basically initially solved the structure by molecular replacement, but then uh, ultimately threw out all the phases and just used structure factors uh, and um, non-crystallographic uh, symmetry averaging to have an unbiased model, model of what GROWEL, GROWES looks like. And basically what we saw was that the trans ring here in red uh, is isomorphous to unliganded GROWEL. The cis ring, though, has undergone major conformational changes. Uh, the apical domains are elevated and twisted, as I'll show you in a second. And we saw grow yes bound as this sort of top hat on top of the whole affair. And here are its mobile loops that had never been seen in standalone structures of uh, Lila Girash and others. Uh, the loops had now become ordered and uh, were 